Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to do something a little bit different because I've been trying to work out how to paint my Necrons, my ridiculous over the top nightmare Necrons I've been making, and quite a few of you suggested that I use the same scheme as Guy from Midwinter Minis, which is the Machiban Dynasty. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, because I haven't actually watched that video yet. I've seen the thumbnail, but I've not watched the video itself, because I thought I'd set myself a little bit of a challenge. I quite like the look of them, and there's a lot of gore and blood and skin going on, which I really like, which is quite similar to what I've been going for with mine as well. So I thought, you know what? Why not copy that? But why not see if I can achieve a similar finish without actually having seen the tutorial? See, something that I think is always worth doing is trying to push yourself to learn how to do something without necessarily going through a step-by-step -step process. Being able to improvise and switch up what you're doing in order to get the finish you like without necessarily having to rigidly adhere to a tutorial as put forward by someone else. That's not to say that that does not have its place. It absolutely does. But in this specific instance, I thought it'd be fun to try and get a similar result having only seen the finished product. Just a little bit of fun to mess about with and see how close I can get. So yeah, that is what this is. Wish me luck and uh, I'll see you on the other side. So we're starting with a Cryptek, a converted slash kit bashed Cryptek, which is just based with lead belcher. All I did was give it a quick spray and that was it. Didn't do anything else to it. There's nothing in the way of like zenithal highlights or anything. It was just a, a single coat. I figured a kind of gunmetal slash lead belcher base would be a good start for what is metallic Necrons. Although straight away I realised looking at the very zoomed in thumbnail for Guy's video that actually there was quite a bit of interesting kind of texture work going on there. I couldn't tell whether it was through sponge weathering, whether it was through dry brushing, or whether I had made some sort of error in, in basing this guy actually in lead belcher. But I figured it should be kind of reasonably easy to get something similar. So I decided to go in with doing a bit of sponge weathering. So using one of the sponges from the Artis Oba Series D um, dampening pad. Super handy for this kind of thing because they're nice and small. They fold up into little kind of compact ends that you can get into all the little bits and crevices of spindly thin models exactly like Necrons. So I did a... Uh, a layer of Rhinox Hide with then with Stormhost Silver over the top, just to try and give it a bit more texture and to bring a bit more bring a bit more silver and a bit more lightness out of the otherwise quite dark base. Having done that, I moved over to painting the skin and fleshy bits. Now the actual fleshy bits were done using Vallejo Earth Texture, which is one of my favourite basing paints because you can use it for so many different things probably a little bit unconventional but I wanted it to look a bit kind of grisly and almost like there was like meat and gristle on parts of the Necrons so that's what I went with. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It actually, the way it dries you've got these little chunks but they're also kind of fairly smooth areas as well so the smoother areas I painted as skin and then everything else was gore and meat. Now I did have a slight issue as I was starting to paint the skin, which was the fact that I started to get very severe tremors in my hand at one point. Now that's something that happens to me fairly regularly. Uh, I can usually fight through it by using the rubber band method, whereby you press your fingers against your palm using, uh, using a rubber band and it stops the hand from shaking. Fortunately I didn't have a rubber band with which to do this, so you'll see uh, at one point I end up adopting a very weird and really quite uncomfortable painting position because I wanted to keep going. I was enjoying this. It was it was fun to do and I was liking the challenge of trying to replicate something without really knowing what I was doing and so I just kind of fought through it. A combination of an otherwise kind of uncomfortable position for my hand and bracing it against the uh, against the painting handle every now and again did a lot to calm the, the tremors down. It happens pretty often, to be honest, but you just get used to it after a while. And there we go. <laughs> you can see right there, start to struggle. So at this point, I've gone over the fleshy bits with corn red, just a quick base coat of it, and I'm now going over that with Tamiya red, Tamiya clear red, the uh, X27 colour. 
And this is, I tend to prefer this over using Blood for the Blood God. I find it a bit easier to control. It's a bit more predictable. Um, I think if you're just throwing blood effects onto something, Blood for the Blood God is really handy, but I don't know, I, I've, I've never properly got on with that paint, so I find Tamiya Clear Red to be just that bit easier for me personally. As I was doing this, I realised, because I kept glancing over to the, uh, the very zoomed in thumbnail, that the red was coming out a lot lighter, like a lot brighter than on, than on Guy's Necrons, and I figured at some point I'd need to go back and give it a wash with something, probably Nuln, in order to dull it down a little bit. So having put the the uh, blood onto the skin and the flesh using the Tamiya Clear Red, I realised that there's two actual human skulls on this Cryptek, and I should probably do something with them. Little bit of an afterthought, I'd totally forgotten, really, that they were there in a weird way, that they weren't Necron heads and that they were actual skulls, so I just went over them quickly with some Unshbati bone, with the intention of either doing something fancy with them, or alternatively, just throwing some Skeleton Horde Contrast on them instead. You can probably guess at this point which one I actually went for. Yes, it was the lazy version, <laughs> but I think it worked in the end. We'll see. So I wanted to try and get a bit of the kind of bronzy sepia finish that is on Guy's Necrons, and so I tried a bit of Agrax Earthshade. I wanted it to still... Still be fairly dark, but have a bit of that a bit of that colour in there. And as I was going through, it was it was having an effect. It was giving it a bit more texture, a bit more depth, but it wasn't quite producing the right colour. So I switched over to Seraphim Sepia. I actually didn't wait for the Agrax to dry. I left it damp uh, and then went in with the sepia over the top and kind of mixed the two together just to get it a bit more a bit more mottled and a bit less a bit less predictable in a way uh, sometimes i think it's easy with seraphim especially to kind of just make everything the same vaguely bronzy hue and i didn't really want that for this guy so i uh, i ended up i ended up kind of mixing the two a little bit and as you can see i remembered the skulls once again and decided to just use contrast skeleton horde it's such a good paint I don't know why you wouldn't use it. It's just really, really good. Now, at this point, I needed to get the blood effects to be just that bit darker and give them a bit more depth and a bit more variation. I wanted some of it to look a bit older and some of it to look a bit more fresh, so I went in with Nuln Oil and just went over it all. And that is where we got to. And that's the end result. Superficially similar, I'm aware there are some definite differences, but there are some good reasons for that that we will shortly become aware of. Okay, so, I've got to the point where I'm stopping for now because I don't know what colour I want to do the lenses on my my, uh, my Cryptek here. I think I want to do them red, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't want to pick something and then regret it further down the line, so I'm just going to leave it for now. The overall look is pretty much done. Now I just need to watch Guy's video and discover whether I actually did anything even remotely close to what he did in order to get a kind of similar results, I think. Okay, so having just watched the video, pretty much did everything <laughs> slightly differently. Um, the flesh and kind of gore effects, nothing to do with like basing paint, PVA and superglue, which is a really good idea, which I'm absolutely going to steal. I mean, I've already, <laughs> I've already nicked the colour scheme, so why not? Um, the, just the whole method of, of going about it to begin with, having that brown base coat that that guy used instead of having like a, a lead belcher base coat, which is what I went for. Um, actually brushing the silver and the bronzy gold over the brown instead of starting with the the kind of silvery colour and then weathering that to make it look a bit more brown and sepia. 
again, a totally opposite way around the way I did it. I think actually doing the doing the sponge weathering kind of works, but I think it needs to be heavier to even get close to the same effect because there's just not enough actual brush strokes that have gone into into my cryptek to really replicate the same effect kind of needs more whether it's more in the way of weathering or more in the way of dry brushing to really bring out a similar finish i don't know but approaching it from the kind of opposite end of the of the, like the, the colors so to speak has made a massive difference to the end finish I'm happy with how the flesh on my Cryptex come out. I think that's worked pretty well. I didn't even think about mixing any uh, any wash in with my kind of blood colour. Um, I'm not using blood for the blood god. I'm using uh, Tamiya Red um, Clear or what? Well, X27 Clear Red, um, which is I pref I just prefer that over blood for the blood god. I find it a bit easier to control. Uh, as I'm sure you will have noticed during painting uh, with the with the time lapse section. I got the shakes in my hand really badly at one point, which has not helped matters, but even though it's a bit clumsy and a little bit rough, I think it's come out okay. There's obviously a lot to do differently for the next one. Uh, I've used this guy as a test model because whilst I like him, he's not my favourite. He's not my favourite out of all the ones I've done, and uh, I figured he would be a good place to start because he's a nice... Mix of fairly simple, but with a bit of a bit of the kind of extravagance of the other models in there. Just a good a good starting point to see whether that is a scheme that I could either replicate or want to continue with. Do want to continue with definitely. I do like the overall finish of it, and I think like guys' Necrons look absolutely horrifying in the best way, uh, which is something I have been going for with my guys, as I'm sure you were, as I'm sure you are aware. Yeah, not too, not too bad, not terrible, not awful. It could be better, but uh, now I know which way round to do things, um, I can give it a second go. To be honest, I just wanted to see what would happen with this. Actually attempting to replicate uh, someone else's colour scheme when there is a tutorial available, but only going off like one or two images just to see if you can, is something I've never really tried before. I've kind of tried to match colours and stuff, like my couple of Tyranid models are supposed to be kind of the shimmer from Annihilation, that kind of colour scheme, but that's quite an abstract thing. It's not just copying the exact scheme without knowing how it was done. It was a fun experiment. I did enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty, probably going to push through and carry on with this kind of scheme for the rest of my guys. I might end up moving it around a little bit and adding a bit more of the heavy weathering, maybe a bit maybe a bit of rust and kind of streaking grime and stuff, just to give them that really extra battered around look, but I'll I'll see how that goes. That might be a part two to this. Keep going with this with this lad, uh, with this cryptech, and just add a bit more on and see where we get and see what happens. But I've enjoyed this. This has been fun. I hope you have found it at the very least interesting. It's probably not been helpful at all. Um, <laughs> turns out, if you want to uh, replicate someone else's colour scheme and there's a tutorial available, just do that. Just follow the tutorial. Way easier. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Obviously, shout out to uh, Guy from Midwinter Minis for the tutorial that he's done. It is very good. I would recommend watching it before attempting to try it yourself, funnily enough. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.